This is a Grizzly G1035 Schaefer. It's a relatively old unit, 1998. It was given to me by my grandfather and it suffers from some of the more common, as I understand it, ailments of a few of the earlier Grizzly machines. First and foremost, the little adjustable locking levers. They had these plastic levers that you would push in and then twist, kind of like a uh, tamper-proof pill bottle top. And I think the idea was that you could then put the levers down out of the way of whatever jig you were using. But basically they just, the plastic fatigued and they broke off. So we solved them by making some of these. Now the post is the standard Grizzly attachment post right here. And this is the neural portion that started to crack and flake off so that you could no longer get any leverage. And what we did is we drilled a hole into the center of it, tapped it, and then screwed in some generic knobs using red Loctite. Basically, without a whole lot of heat, you'll never get this back apart again. And then you can just use it now like a regular knob. And yeah, okay, those levers don't get out of the way anymore, but it's not like they worked in the first place. And I was hesitant to buy new ones for fear they would do the exact same thing in a year or two. Now, the other issue that we used to have is it would dome the washer. So these washers went on here and it screwed in tight. But the adjustment slot is rather substantial when one compares it to the size of the bolt. You know, it's, uh, dare I say, not machined exactly perfect. So rather than mess around with any sort of spacer or whatnot, I'm just removing these washers. And these are rocker arm washers out of a, an old engine and of course they're a hardened steel and that way there is no doming there is no deforming it's just going to lock tight they're never going to wear out they do take up a fair bit of depth but considering that the screws still come all the way through it isn't like I lost any actual clamping power And now I can lock these fences tight again. And that's so much better than using vice grips, which is what I had been doing for quite some time. When it comes to using the machine, it runs basically like any other split top adjustable shaper. It's, it's really not that big a deal. However, I have noticed that there are two additional areas that sometimes this machine, and I assume others like it, can fail at. The first is that these faces might not be completely 90 to the table. And that, of course, I mean, they just sort of sit here. So it's just gravity that holds them down. First thing you want to check, do you have anything underneath of them? Because they are just sitting there under their own weight, and then they snug up, you know, so on and so forth. And you want to make sure that they're clean underneath. Additionally, you want to make sure that you don't have a domed washer because a domed washer will try to center itself. Hold on, buddy. I'll get you in just one sec. So here is that slot. The thing is, this post is not exactly in the center of that milled area. And if your washer starts to dome, then it will act like a centering pin. And so as you tighten it up, it will lift this until it's in the proper location. And that, of course, can either cause it to tip back or it can cause it to tip forward, depending on where your slot is machined. By using these big, hard, flat steel washers, there is no doming, so therefore there is no centering. And you notice that even though these washers are domed, I put the flat spot back. And I noticed that mine was doing that prior to making up these replacements that I would Tighten it up with a pair of ice grips, and it would lift ever so slightly. So before you try to make any adjustments to your machine, you really need to double check that number one, 
there's nothing underneath your your table extensions or your fence I should say extensions and then number two that when you tighten it it's not trying to tip these in any one direction and once you've assured yourself of that you want to go ahead and check that they are 90 to the table this one is actually tipped forward just the tiniest bit maybe uh, who, who could have guessed it they both kind of are just a fraction just a tiniest fraction of a degree that is actually tipped forward so I want to come down here and inspect it now I have pulled it off and lo and behold what do I see right in here I've got some junk stuck to the bottom. I'm not sure what it is. But it's thick enough that it managed to stick and, and wad up. What you would do, and oh, you've got to be so very careful with this. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure there's nothing here, there's nothing there. But if you're still tipped, you can put it on your belt sander and just float it the tiniest little bit, putting pressure if you need to tip your face forward, just hold it from the front slightly. If you need to tip your face back, hold it from the rear slightly. Go very, very slowly and double check all the time. I'll bet, however, that my tipping problem, as fine as it was, was simply that wad of stuff stuck right in there. And I'm willing to bet I'll find the other side has the exact same issue. Sure enough, there it is. I'm not sure what it is. It, I, I suspect it's a, a, a mixture of the original Cosmoline that the machine was shipped with and then dirt, dust, and time. These screws are fighting me. Those screws are fighting you? Uh -huh. All right, hold on one sec, and I'll be right over there. Let me recheck my measurement. Oh, yeah, that is pretty darn perfect. I might need. Just a whisper of sanding, probably done by hand on the heel of this one. But basically it's now perfect. The other measurement is to be taken across the two faces. You see it, buddy? This is called a shaper. Why? Because uh, it shapes wood. Now, most of the time when I'm working with this, I like to use a sacrificial strip clamped on to my base here, and then I pull it backwards through so the bit sticks out. Because it always stinks when you're pushing something along and it hits and it catches here temporarily, and then you leave a mark or a burn spot, or if your fence is farther back and it tips down, you leave a little ridge. But sometimes you just need to do it. And the way to check this is to carefully, using a straight edge, line the two up very precisely and snug it down. And again, you want to check that nothing moves when you snug it down. And then see. That actually looks pretty good. You can take, if you're going to use the two fence system, and this is just sort of semi-sacrificial MDF, you can take a, a block plane and, and just bring the corners off right here so that stuff is less likely to catch. And I would recommend doing it along these edges here as well because you know how MDF is and the moisture in the shop is going to make this top edge swell and contract just a little bit. When I have the two sides lined up about as best as I can get them, I end up with a slight hollow here and here. And I can tell that because when I flex the ruler, it flexes off a point over here and a point over here. 
And I want to find out just how big a hollow I'm dealing with there. Six thousandths. So that's the hollow I'm working with. That seems perfectly appropriate to me. I know that you could once again pull these off and put these on your sander and lightly remove a little material, hold it over here, hold it over here. But I'm fine with that. I want my stuff to slide past. And if I've got a sacrificial fence clamped on here, then none of this matters anyways. So I like that just the way it is. Looking inside the unit, okay, we can see it has two speeds on an adjustable belt. The belt is, well, small and pathetic, to be quite honest. I mean, this is a horse and a half shaper, and it's driven by what appears to be a rock tumbler belt. But whatever, it's also a heck of a lot of motor hung cantilevered off this mount. You're going to want to probably keep your eye on how straight up and down that spindle is. The only thing I can think of is to go find yourself some drill rod stock that's the same size as your bits, clamp it in there, and then check square off the table. I hate to say it, but I would expect, given this much weight hanging over here, and the fact that it's all resting on those slide travels, I'd, I'd expect her to be tipping after a few years. I also notice how dished these washers are, so that would make adjusting your motor a bit difficult. It's, it actually appears to be a really nice, I don't want to say entry level, because no shaper, I suppose, is entry level. But it's, it's a really nice, compact, stout unit. It's going to need some wings put on the sides. To be honest, I don't have room for them up here anyways. Never, never really owned a, a good working shaper. I, I don't even really own many bits for it. I got this set of interlocking 45 degree bits because I wanted to build big octagon table barrels. And I was really struggling with getting a cut good enough to do that. Hence, reworking all this up here. But I thought that would be really cool to be able to make my own octagon tables. But that's the only set I actually own for the machine. And when I look at the prices, they make me pee myself a little. So I don't really have much of anything for it. But maybe as I need it. You know, this was my grandfather's. and He did boats. So it's probably had a, a fair bit of work on it. I'll need some sort of dust collection system. I just stick the hose over the top of here and it gets most of it. But I've seen them and they basically poured it off back here. I'm not sure what this post is for. I suspect it's for a guard I don't have that covers the top there. So I'll probably pull that post off so that I can install a dust port right here. And then it would collect a lot more of the chips. Sticking the hose down on here doesn't really do much at all. Overall, I'm kind of excited to, to go ahead and use it. I just never really used one before, so I don't really know what to do with it.